afternoon. I'm Tina and I'm going to present you for the first time the Erasmus Key Action 2 Plus project which just been awarded last month uh, and the title is Via Culture. It's a collaboration between universities and high schools. The leading organisation is Cate's High School from Wales. Yay! And we have University of Bristol on board, Alexander's University of Saloniki, University of Padova, International School of Belgrade, so it's a bunch of people with different specialities and different uh, backgrounds. So the whole idea is about to create resources for teachers. It sounds very simple and very straightforward, but it's more complicated. <laughs> Let me explain. So at the beginning, I'll show you some background why we've chosen this particular area. And we talk about EAL, English as an additional language. In the UK, the people who live and study in the schools and they have English as a second language are uh, much more than we think. So at the moment we have 1.5 million of students who speak English as a foreign language and only in Wales we have 26, 26,000. So what we wanted to do is to help these people, help these students be more integrated be more included in the society, be alert, be there and have equal opportunities of having a career progression and being part of the society as we expect from them starting in mainstream schools. So at this picture you can see it's from the 1950s back from Cardiff and you can see, I want you more to focus on the picture than on the words because it's a lady trying to buy something from the Cardiff market and you can see how, you know, the gentleman looks at the lady, how lady struggles to communicate. And these are one of the everyday struggles that people who have English as a second language face, especially when they're young and they've been just brought to the country. So, so some of the struggles might be language incompetence, lack of required skills, rejection, marginalization, intolerance and inflexibility on behalf of the society. And this is an ongoing issue, it's not very new. So, the Via Culture idea was that to create resources for teachers that they will be able to use them in order to teach English as a foreign language through cultural heritage assets, archaeology, process drama and new technologies. We wanted to blend all these things together so as to help and actually develop social inclusion, make these people feel that they can be part of the society. So, on our board we have education researchers, foreign language teachers, archaeologists, cultural heritage specialists and drama facilitators. And this project that I have to highlight uh, is of course funded by the European Union and British Council and also from the HLF. So I'm not going to read the term because we all are familiar with it, but what I would like to say is that cultural heritage is perceived in different ways. So we ran some evaluations with other students, the pre-evaluation forms, and everyone described cultural heritage in a different way. The one that they really like is that the clothes I wear. And when I thought about it, I was like, it is. It's part of who we are. The other one says the Quran. Yes, it is. Everything is cultural heritage, and we're all carrying it with us, especially for people who have traveled the whole countries to arrive in the UK. So all we want to achieve is by combining cultural heritage with archaeology, process drama new technology is to promote inclusion and diversity, learn English, and of course explore society's history and social contexts. And this is what I've learned, so pay attention. Bioculture <laughs> aims to utilize the methods that archaeology deploys in order not only to study the past, but also to use it as a language teaching medium. I'm an English teacher, as you can tell. So, students, well, they will be involved in the project and with the help of archaeology, they will be able to develop their recording skills, photography and video, drawing skills, language skills, collaboration and teamwork, writing skills, history and cultural knowledge. In the last one, which is the one I'm mostly interested, is something that through the evaluation forms I realised that they all have it in their hearts, they all have it in their minds in a certain way, but they have lack of terminology, lack of the vocabulary to express it. So when I broke it down into pieces in the class, so as to ask, are you any familiar with this? The first answer was, no, nah, what's that, what's that? And then I started explaining pieces of this, and they were like, yes, it's this, it's our clothes, it's our food, it's who we are, part, 
practically. So all we wanted is to build all these things together and having as our research area the View Town and Cardiff Bay. These are two areas of Cardiff that have the richest background and I would say is a gem because you can clearly see how people used to live together with all the differences they had and how they still live together, how they cooperate, how they, they live and how they blossom. So what we would like to provide is social inclusion and tolerance by celebrating the diversity of Pew Town, the social values of the United Kingdom, useful skills and also to teach the language. Because as we've seen in the previous picture, language can be a barrier. But if you overcome this through the already acquired knowledge you have, it can be an asset. So we aim to record the religious buildings as the first part of the project of the Pew Town, so as to see how people can, by visiting the buildings, by recording the buildings, by interacting with all the assets that we can provide them, they can learn the language better. We will implement GIS, Level 2 and Level 3 building recording, urban landscape archaeology, oral microhistory recording. Any questions on this, please pass it to the archaeologists of the team. <laughs> Cardiff's Pew Town and Bay. So this is a, a, a little bit of the background of the area, because at the very beginning, uh, the Marquis of Pew uh, invested on this area, created the first dock of Cardiff, and Ferry Road was a very rich road with houses of merchants and sailors. The Luton Square has offices uh, for businesses. The coal exchange back in 1886 was a really important building. And there, it was the first million pound check that has been ever signed in the UK. So as you can imagine, it was an area where lots of money, fame and businesses were going on. However, there was a bit of decline after that and it's important to see how there was up and down in the area and how all this scaffolded what we see today. Have you ever watched the Tiger Bay movie? It's an interesting one because you can see how things have changed and how people still feel that they belong in this area. So in Butte Town there are more than 50 countries, people from 50 countries in this tiny corner of Cardiff. The most uh, profound communities nowadays are Somalis, Yemenis and Greeks, whose influence still lives on. But after the riots, white people felt quite afraid, not safe. The city uh, has started to become quite dirty and noisy for them, and the crime level was rising, so they moved to the other side of Cardiff. So the docks acquired the nickname Target Bay, and Greek, Arab, Chinese, Somali, Irish and French people were just some of the many people you can find on Butte Road in a single hour. It's exactly the same. Nothing has changed. This is the picture from the old docks and as you can see it was uh, a business area and the docks has brought all us, all the travellers, to Cardiff. And societies were merged but they were the diversity was great, but people used to live together. You can see pictures from the marriages, from the traditions they kept, from hanging out all together in peace, and also all the rich of the cultural diversity in the place. So, Cate's High School. Why Cate's, first of all? Why we have been funded? Uh, we are a very diverse school, but the number I want you to pay attention is the last word. 45% have English as their second language. It's a very rich percentage, and we are at the heart of Cardiff, and we are not in Pew Town. We are in Cate's area. But still, people are travelling to come to our school. We have a very strong EAL department. Uh, apart from that, from the questionnaire that we've run at the beginning of the project, we've asked them how many communities and how many community buildings do you know in the area? And as you can see from the answers, most of them, all of them, they're fully aware of the Muslim communities, because the vast majority is Muslim. But as you can see here, it's very low, the Anglican, the Methodist community, the Puja, the Jewish, and from the Catholic community, they knew, only seven of them knew the existence of it. So what we realize, clearly, obviously, from the forms, is that they are only aware about what is going on in their own culture, in their own past. But we live together, we see each other every day, they don't even realise I'm orthodox, 
So we are there, we communicate, we help each other, we spend all of our hours together, but the lack of knowledge is there. So how are we going to have inclusion and tolerance if we don't know what we are in reality? So we thought that through this project, by deploying all these different methods and mediums, we can expand the diversity, we can really understand who we are and be more inclusive and more tolerant. As you can see here from the survey we've done, this is the area where we're going to work, this is Butte Street, and these are some of the buildings we're going to record and explore. We have St Mary's Church, an already recorded listed heritage asset, the Greek Orthodox Church, the Noor Mosque, the Norwegian Church, St Paul Methodist Church, Vine Community Church, Freedom Church of Cardiff. These are a few of the buildings we will record and we will help our students to explore. These are four pictures from these buildings, the Norwegian church, the Greek Orthodox church at the back. It's been built since 1908, if I'm not mistaken. The mosque and the St. Mary's church. So all these buildings are right next to the houses. They cross these roads every day to come to school and then even don't realize what these buildings are and what past they have. So this is the last two pictures that I'm going to show you that shows the truth of the project and the heart of the project. This is a picture of a Cardiff, Cardiff school in 1948 and this is a picture from my students. As you can see it's exactly the same diversity, it's exactly the same amalgamation of people who live together speak different languages, believe in different religions, but they are in the same buildings doing the same work altogether. So the best way to achieve inclusion is to utilize all the different gifts that we've been given through archaeology, process drama, English language teaching, so as to merge them together and help them acquire a better future in our society and also feel included and active members. Thank you very much. <laughs>